Hello and welcome to Bullish, I'm your host Alex Wilhelm. Now this week on the show we're talking about automation or how long until a robot does your job and maybe your chores. Now look, we all want a robot in our lives that will clean our house, do our laundry and generally speaking take care of us. You can use the help and I know that I can use the help. But robots just aren't there yet, mostly. Instead we see smaller, simpler devices like vacuums that are useful and maybe able to do some things that we need, but certainly not everything. The trend, however, in, in my view, is very clear. People are willing to pay for hardware that makes their lives easier, and that means that investment dollars will continue to flow. But keep in mind, intelligent robots are a lot more than just very advanced software. You also have to make strides in the hardware itself. Now happily, there's a burgeoning hardware community dedicated to building just that. To tell us how long until we never have to fold our own laundry again, we have Brady Forrest. Highway One is a San Francisco-based hardware incubator that helps entrepreneurs build not just with bits and bytes, but with solders, wires, and Wi-Fi as well. As VP and also co-author of a book on hardware startups, Brady Forrest seems determined to keep things IRL. Many continue to claim that software is eating the world, but technologists like Forrest are getting their hands dirty so you don't have to. Please welcome to the program, Brady Forrest. Brady, my man. Hey. Good to have you on. Thanks for having me here. So I was prepping for the shoot a couple mm -hmm. days ago, and I came across and kind of fell in love with a phrase, day-to-day -day robotics. And to me, that brings robots to the people. So I'm curious, can you give us a couple examples of either very intelligent tech, or hardware really, or robotics that is designed to make my life easier? Well, I mean, the one that probably a lot of people know is the Roomba. Sure, but something that's super exciting is Serenity Kitchen, okay. which is a cooking robot. If I recall correctly, you put in a food pod and then it robotically with an arm cooks your meal for you and then you just walk over there and you have, say, dinner. Yeah, so you have fresh cooked ingredients, make you a hot meal. Okay, but that's a relatively large thing. Do you have anything smaller you could show us that would um, kind of bring that to the uh, more pedestrian level? Yeah, not robotics, but this is Ringly. And Ringly? Here you go, Alex. May I oh, put absolutely. this on your finger? Making an honest man out of me. Thank you. I am. And next time I text you, that would light up and buzz and let you know that I've sent you a special message. Now, a robot is intelligent software attached to very advanced hardware. Right? That's roughly kind of what we think about when it is that. But are we going to see a divide between advanced hardware and robotics, or do those two categories of products eventually over time become more combined into one category? Well, I mean, there's also automation to consider. And so okay. you have something simple like SwitchMate, which is a magnetic cover that goes over your lights. Okay. And you don't need it to be that advanced to actually work and provide a lot of value. So there's different levels of intelligence I'm able to apply to hardware mm -hmm. based on how complex the task is. So, so Serenity is a lot smarter than Ringley, for example. And will we see that gradation uh, maintain and persist, or will it become everything is so smart we don't even think about this being less intelligent than that? Well, I think that's where a lot of excitement around machine learning, deep learning comes in, where yeah, over time... What, what does that actually mean in this context? Well, in this context, you know, Ringly will start to figure out which notifications are important to you without you having to set them in advance. Okay, so essentially I interact with it and it learns and therefore it's even easier to use because it's more useful while being the same actual device. Yes, Okay. whereas Serenity right now, it times when the food should be done. Sure. But in time, it will be able to detect when the food is done. And you're fine with machine learning being the intelligence behind automation that then makes robotics in my day-to-day -day life better. So yes. you're, you're comfortable with giving computers that amount of not control per se, but definitely a hand into my life and how I interact with things. Well, I mean, I think it all comes down to value. Like okay. right now, I get a lot of value out of my Sonos system. Like sure. it works, I interface with Spotify it's and Rhapsody. It's not intelligent per se. It can hear your voice, but it's not, uh, it doesn't have its own intelligent layer to itself. But I think that'll happen over time. Okay. And right now I can set alarms, I can, I can start to do automation. And I think over time, Sonos would maybe start to realize like what type of music I want. And I can have it throughout my home. So to bring this back, is, is intelligence essentially then automation fused to machine learning working together? And that's the combination that actually brings to me a, say, if you want to, robot. Okay, that's fair enough. Now, you mentioned a couple startups, and I know a lot of guys out there that are building mm -hmm. stuff, but mostly software kids. You know? And I, I don't see as many hardware companies because hardware is hard. But do you think it's going to be smaller players or more incumbent powers that really bring us forward? in robotics and automation? I think startups always play the role of being distributed R&D for larger companies. And so you have a company like Ringley that's kind of pioneering this space. If it starts to become really big, either they'll start to consolidate or other people will consolidate them in. You mean they'll buy them, essentially? Yes. Do you think we're going to see a wave of consolidation in the uh, early stage hardware companies right now over the next couple of years? Or are we going to see them kind of grow on their own and try to build and develop their own product lines? I think we're already seeing that. I mean, Dropcam acquired by Nest. 
yes. is, is a now great example of that. Yeah. And SmartThings is that play for Samsung. Sure. And I don't know if Apple's going to end up acquiring anything, but by setting up HomeKit, they'll be creating their own ecosystem. And Google has a platform as well called, mm -hmm. I, actually, I forget what it is. Connects with Nest. There we go. So uh, my parents are not the most tech-savvy people in the world, and sorry for that, Mom. Um, but they're incredibly intelligent. And mm -hmm. so thinking about their lives, they live in Oregon, you know, um, in th say three to five to six, or how many years you want, how many devices will they have in their home that are intelligent and connected? Is it like five or is it like 500? Well, I think the first thing is we need to get over the hurdle of installation. And so once that starts to happen, I think people will start to put these in their homes very slowly, but in a way where it just builds. And so you'll have tens of devices. Ten, so dozens and, really. Yeah, okay. and then you'll start spending your Sunday afternoons, maybe at the airport, kind of tweaking your settings so that when you walk in, the lights turn blue. Not and when if, your not stocks machine go up. Not knows my preferences and does it for me. All right, the last question. So my parents have tens. I'll probably have more than that because I'm a nerd. Mm -hmm. How many will you have in your house in three to five years? Oh, I would say over 100. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Easily. It's crazy, and the future is fun. Yes. Thanks for coming in, man. Hey, thanks for having me. Bullish airs every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific, and you can find it here on TechCrunch.com.